show you how we offload this thing. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This is my 1950s Mercedes-Benz race car transporter. Uh, this is a car or a vehicle I lusted after since I was a kid. Uh, if you don't know the history, back in the 50s when Mercedes-Benz went Grand Prix racing, most of the racing was England, Germany, France, Spain, and the Germans did not like to fix their cars at the racetrack. They liked to fix them at the factory. So what they did was, they built was what was at the time the world's fastest car transporter, 108 or 105 or 108 miles an hour. And what this had was, this had the engine out of the famous Mercedes Gullwing, you know, the 300 SL, uh, the big six cylinder uh, mechanical fuel injection, uh, just like the race car. So what they would do is if a car broke down, the transporter would pick it up, drive, you know, eight, nine hours and 100 miles an hour back to Germany, fix it, and then drive it back the next day and have it at the race. It was a very romantic vehicle and so unusual looking. And look how far back uh, the wheels are from the cab. When you drive this thing, you find yourself, whoa! I mean, it, everything happens behind you. Uh, this is the ultimate expression of cab forward. You always hear that expression, cab forward design. This is the ultimate cab forward design. In fact, the reason I bought my Corvair Ramside was it was the closest in design I could get to this. Now, what happened to the actual one? Uh, the actual one uh, lived at Mercedes-Benz until 1967. And then Mercedes-Benz decided it was too big, it was taking up too much space, uh, just crush this thing and destroy it. So, you know, Back in the early 60s, there wasn't this nostalgia for antique cars or older vehicles. Everybody liked modern stuff. I mean, sure, there were some uh, people that collected vintage cars, but they were, it wasn't like it is today. You were just seen as, like my dad used to say, why would you buy an old car and you get a brand new Cadillac for the same price? It didn't make any sense to fix up an old car. You know, there were better transporters that were more efficient, that were faster by the time this thing uh, met its demise. So what happened was, I think it was just crushed. And then there was such an outcry from people who just loved this vehicle. You know, a Corgi made toys of it, a dinky toy, everybody made a toy version of this car. So Mercedes-Benz decided to build a replica, and an exact replica, as only Mercedes-Benz could do. And that's at the Mercedes, uh, museum in Germany. I went to see it actually. Uh, I think it cost them something like two million dollars. Now this one, this one was built initially by a gentleman in Sweden named Sergei. I, I'm not good with my Swedish names. I never met the man. He, he passed away. It was not a hundred percent completed. He had done most of the body work and he did a, a wonderful job. Uh, it just needed a lot of things to make it roadworthy. And since I actually use it as a transporter for my Mercedes, we uh, cut these holes in the side. I'll show you how this works. We, you know, you want to carry straps and tools. So obviously you put your key in and boom. And we can carry all of our stuff in here. Uh, I use it as an actual transporter. Uh, this one does not have the Gullwing Mercedes engine from the 50s. That would be <laughs> crazy expensive. But it has a Mercedes truck engine from the mid-80s, and it, it does the job reasonably well. It does have the Mercedes-Benz uh, Gullwing uh, dashboard. Uh, we put air conditioning in it because we live in California. It gets crazy hot here. Uh, we have obviously dynamated everything. When I got it, it was more like a showpiece. It really wasn't a working truck. Now we've put uh, better air suspension in it so we can raise and lower it. Uh, and we use it as a transporter. And people love this thing, you know. You take this to a Mercedes meet and, and people go crazy. They just think it's the coolest looking thing. And to this day, I still think it's one of the coolest looking vehicles of all time. As you can see, it looks uh, great with the Mercedes Benz uh, Gullwing up on there. But they used to carry the Grand Prix cars in these things. You got your spare tire right here. These come off and uh, they turn into ramps and you'll see, we'll unload it later and show you how that works. Uh, there's no power steering or anything in this car. Um, as I said, the only option is something we put in, uh, air conditioning. Uh, it's got the proper plaid seats like they had back in the day. And uh, out of respect for Mercedes-Benz, we have replica on the side because we're not trying to pass it off as the real thing. But uh, I think it's just as cool as the real thing. And since the real thing doesn't exist anymore, ta-da. 
I mean, I love the fact that there are people that will make these type of things. Oh, we also I'll put a door here so you could get to uh, the radiator. In the actual car, in the actual vehicle, this did not open. But since we have fuses and we have um, the air conditioning and everything else up there to get to the radiator, it just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the front of it is, as you can see, just basically a Mercedes sedan from the early 50s. Uh, proper color. Uh, what else have we got? It's got a winch on it so we can pull the car up. Um, these are plastic, but I will do them in glass one of these days. That seems to work fine for right now. But it's, uh, it's just fun to drive. I mean, as a, it's a little awkward because, because you're always, the wheels turn behind you like, woohoo! It's like, it's like walking like this all the time, you know, the wheel. It's a little goofy, but, uh, but I, I just love this thing. And as I said, if you're a Mercedes-Benz fan, this is a piece of Mercedes-Benz history that does not exist anymore and has been recreated. And that's what we want to do as, as a homage to uh, that great era of the 50s. In fact, I have Fangio's uh, first trophy uh, that he gave me. I was quite honored to have that. It, it's pretty cool. It's his first World Cup. I'll tell you what, why don't we take it for a ride and then uh, we'll come back here. We'll show you how we offload the car and then we can show you. I can't show you the engine compartment unless the, uh, the car is off of here because it, you can't lift the hood. It hits. That's you don't want to break down with the car on there, basically. So that's what we'll do. We'll take it for a spin. We'll show you how it goes down the road. It looks really cool going down the road, especially with, uh, with the car on the back. And then we'll come back here, offload it, and we'll go into it in a bit more detail. And I'll show you that cup when we get back. I gotta admit, it looks kind of cool going down the road. Now, we're not gonna go 108 or 105 like the original did, but she does 65, 70, no problem. You take this thing to the German car shows and they go crazy. Actually, it drives pretty nicely. I mean, it's. Just such an odd sensation to have the wheels behind you. Some of my favorite Mercedes-Benz came out of this era. The Gullwing, of course, 300 SL convertible. The, uh, the big uh, SC, I think it was called. The one that had the, uh, the SL engine, but it was uh, the coupe with the sunroof. Ah, oh. three on the, uh, four on the tree. Shifter, oh, that's a fantastic car. The build quality of those early Mercedes was just unbelievable with that rich, rich German leather. Oh, just, just fantastic. Fuel mileage is all right. Just typical for a truck. Probably, I think on the freeway, you're probably getting 15, 15 to 18, something like that. It's not bad. It's just a little Mercedes truck engine, but it's a, it's a powerhouse. It's got a five-speed box in it, so that helps. Obviously, when you take the car off, you get a little better mileage because you're dropping, you know, 3,000 pounds. It's just so unusual looking going down the road. People always have to look twice like, what? What? What is that thing? I like the fact that it's a single vehicle car transporter. You know, I don't like the ones where you stack 10 or 15 cars on. But when we go back to the garage, I'm going to show you the build on this car. I've got a whole scrapbook of how it was put together. It's pretty amazing. The thing I love about these old Mercedes is the turn signals are right here on the horn ring. So you turn it left, go left, and it turns the signals on, turn it right, turn the signals on. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, it's also a horn. I got this on here because it's no power steering and the, you hit your knuckles on this dashboard. But as you can see, it's a proper Mercedes uh, dashboard for the period, just like the SL. Put on my blinkers, there you go. As I said, five-speed gearbox is for suspension to raise and lower the front end, raise and lower the rear end. Those are cause your air conditioning vents here. Air compressor, radiator fan, clock. Got speedo, tack, fuel, 
water temperature, oil pressure, and oil temperature. Well, this air suspension actually rides pretty nice. You know, when I first got this thing, it was really just kind of a shell. And there was so much engine heat, even in the dead of winter, you, you're hanging out the window with your tongue hanging out. It's so hot in this thing. So we dynamated it to, uh, obviously, for insulation purposes and, and for quietness. Put the air conditioner in. Now it drives like a regular truck. Every time we look in the rear view mirror, I see a Mercedes right on my tail. Ow! It's, it's just meant to pull one, it's just meant to pull one race car, and race cars tend to be anywhere from 1,800 pounds to maybe 3,500, something like that. So it's not meant to uh, haul a ton of bricks. It's just meant to haul one car. So that was the idea. Fairly small for a tow truck or for a hauler. And, you know, it's meant to be a practical vehicle. Not really a vehicle you want to take up in the hills and go through the twisties in, you know. It's, but we'll take it back to the shop. I'll show you some photos of the build. Uh, it took us about, oh God, a year and a half to finally get this thing all sorted. But now it's a proper car, a proper truck, and, 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 and does work that a proper truck does. It's not just a show vehicle. So that's what's kind of cool. In fact, you can even haul cars that aren't Mercedes Benzes, but I, don't like to do that. Keep it all in the family. Show you how we offload this thing. That's about as low as she goes, huh? George, come up. The, the ramp is collapsing. Ramp is, ramp is collapsing. Nice thing about a crummy paint shop. It's well, you saw how we offloaded it. That's how they did it back in the day. Uh, all these ramps seem to lock and fit in. Uh, we hadn't we hadn't done it in a while, so it uh, it, it got a little uh, got a little crazy. Actually, that should be in the. It's going to rattle around, but I'll fix that later. I'll show you the engine in this thing. It's nothing, you know, normally my engine com compartments are immaculate, so I apologize, but it's a truck. And it's just, 
the mid eight mid eighties Mercedes Mercedes truck engine. What is it? Uh, I think it's 2.4, 2.3, 2.4 liter four cylinder Mercedes mid eighties truck engine, and it's a workhorse. It uh, does what it's supposed to do. Carries this thing around. Uh, the weight of the vehicle is, you got it written right here, 4,614 pounds. So, uh, five speed manual box, got the winch. You can see all the dynamat we put in here. There was so much heat coming out of this thing. So, it's nothing fancy, just a, a real workhorse truck engine. Put that up there and let's put this back down. But now I'll show you some of the build of this thing. It's pretty amazing. Put on my grandpa glasses. Here's the original car, the original vehicle right here, with across the fabulous SLR in the back with the you see the famous air brake. These are all pictures of the, the real deal. You know, Fangio drove these things. That looks like Fangio there. I'm not sure, but I think that might be Fangio. Now I'll show you the replica. Here are some of the dimensions. Now I'll show you the Now this is a very popular Swedish magazine. I get it at home even though I don't speak Swedish, but the pictures are in English, if that makes any sense. Anyway, the man who built this car, Sergei was his name. Hope I'm saying it right. This is, uh, this is my car in Sweden before, uh, you know, it doesn't have the toolboxes or any of that on the side. But I'm gonna show you his build on this thing. First, you make a wooden buck. You see how that's done? The front of a, I think that's a Mercedes 190 windshield in there. If you look over my shoulder, here's, there's the donor car right there. Well, there you are. There's basically the whole. He, as you can see, he had a lot of models of this vehicle. There he is making the grill. Look at this. I mean, okay, it takes a lot of work to do your own for forging. There he is making all the, the pieces. This is what you do when you don't have Netflix, okay? You have time to actually build stuff instead of watching Game of Thrones or something else. Because there's a lot more nudity in Game of Thrones, but ultimately this might be more rewarding. See, he's practicing putting the car in the ramp. There's the, the buck again to make the whole front. You don't get rich doing this stuff. It's more labor of love. See, he made the whole dash. I mean, pretty amazing. He was quite, quite an artist. Sweden has a huge car culture. They love American cars over there, but they well, actually, they love all cars. But uh, yeah, the Swedes are very, uh, a lot of craftsmen. Look at the, look at the beautiful, copied the dashboard exactly. Mercedes Benz spent two million building their replica. I don't know what he spent, but he was not a rich man. He just, just a lot of, a lot of work. Here he is. Borrowing somebody Mercedes to get the ramp specifications. And let's see, there's the airbags for the air suspension right there. So that kind of gives you some idea of the amount of work that went into this. It's, uh, it's a great piece. And I really do uh, treasure this. You know, it's such an oddball. Everybody likes to make replicas of Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all kinds of, you know, exotic race cars. I think I'm the only one that really likes replicas of transporter trucks. But here's that Fangio trophy I was talking about. See, it says FIA 
uh, Juan Manuel Fangio, Champion du Bon, uh, deconstructed 1951. That's, uh, that's pretty good. See, nowadays you get millions of dollars for being world champ. Back then you got a firm handshake, a slice of cold mutton, and oh, here's a little cup, you know. You risk your life. I mean, these guys were just unbelievable. And he was certainly the greatest of them all, or one of the greatest of them all. You can argue about those all day long, but uh, this is one of the most prized possessions, and I put it next to my, I got the real cup next to the replica truck with the real Mercedes, so two out of three is not bad. See you guys later, thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs>